welcome to this episode of family matters this is the day that the lord has made we will rejoice and be glad in it yes every day of our life is a day to be rejoiced because it's a gift from god last week we were discussing about the ministry of reconciliation and how god has given us the message of reconciliation and how he has given us the position to be his ambassadors on this earth let's continue with the same topic in matthew chapter 5 reading from verses 13 onwards you are the salt of the earth but if the salt loses its saltiness how can it be made salty again it is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men you are the light of the world a city on a hill cannot be hidden neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl instead they put it on the stand and it gives light to everyone in the house in the same way let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your father in heaven it's called the sermon on the mount he tells them that you are the salt and you are the light what does it mean to us as a family we have to be salt and light salt is something we all know its properties salt is something that preserves salt is something that changes the environment it gives taste it gives a different flavor to the food it preserves it it flavors the food it changes the environment the same way light also changes the environment when there is light darkness cannot overcome it that's what the bible teaches us and we know and when something is lighted it will be seen by all that's why it, it compares it with a city on a hill when we ha- when we become light everyone has to everyone will be forced to look at us they will be attracted to us because we are shining in darkness so that's what jesus is teaching the disciples and those who followed him we are to be the lamp how can we be the lamp we have to think of the ways in which as a family we can be a lamp a lamp shows the path for others it shows the path for us but it should also show the path for others when we are a light people would like to see the path through us god has already prepared the way for people to go to heaven so it is our responsibility to show it it must give light to everyone that's what the bible teaches us let your light shine before men if the salt loses its saltiness it has to be trampled if the light is kept under a bowl no one can see it it will be put off so both salt and light are used so that others can enjoy it others can see the path others can know the taste others can know the change in the environment that's what uh, salt and light are naturally so when we become salt and light we will show others that god is still alive that jesus is the miracle worker and jesus can change the lives of people if we concentrate and focus on these things every day of our life will be a blessing not only to us to others around us so we need to understand that we are called to serve people serve others 
through simple acts of kindness. We have to serve people by showing our love to them. We have whatever is necessary. We know our own position. We know our own strengths and our weaknesses. Use your strength to tell people, show people that Jesus loves them. And he has died for them and that he will surely have a relationship with them. When we read all this, I'm, I was reminded of Peter's life. Peter was a very bold man. In these days of darkness where there is so much of teaching and preaching against Christians telling other, sharing the gospel. How can we do this as a family? That's the question we have before us. We need to be bold enough. Peter was very bold. If you turn to Acts chapter 2, reading from verse 14, Then Peter stood up with the leaven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd, Fellow Jews, and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I'll pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. In, uh, in the following verses, he talks very boldly about Jesus. This man, in verse 20, this man was handed over to you by God's set purpose. You killed him and with the help of wicked men, put him to death. You put him to death. He was so bold to tell them that they killed Jesus by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead. And he was boldly preaching the gospel to all those people. And they were willing to accept, have faith in Jesus. Always Peter was a man who was uh, willing uh, to ask questions, to answer things, to talk boldly. He, was that, he had that nature of being a volatile personality. When Jesus uh, walked on water, he says, I will walk on water too. He had that desire, the passion and he also had that boldness within him. But before he, his, uh, before he received the anointing, before he was baptized, he was sometimes bold and harsh, arrogant we can say. See, in, uh, and sometimes he was bold and he was a bystander. He did not involve himself. Between these two, we must take a stand. We cannot be arrogant with our boldness. We cannot just hide our boldness and stand, become a bystander. There should be a compromise of these two. There we will have empathy for the people. If our boldness is... Uh, is again combined with the empathy and sympathy and love for the people, then it will work wonders. Let's read from Matthew chapter 26 verses 33 onwards. Peter replied, Even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. I tell you the truth. Jesus answered, this very night, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. But Peter declared, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. He was very bold before Jesus. And without understanding what Jesus was telling him, he says, I will not deny you. No way will I deny you. 
and Jesus also tells him, Satan has got the permission from me, has gotten the permission from me to tempt you. He, but I am praying that you will not lose your faith. Strengthen your brothers after you are healed, after you get strengthened. All these were uh, cautious statements declared by Jesus to help Peter in the time of trouble. But when he goes through that experience, he denies Jesus three times. In, before a woman, he says, I don't know him. I have not known him. He cursed him. All those things he did because his boldness was covered that time. He became a bystander. He did not have any empathy or sympathy with him. He was only bothered about his own life. So when he was intimidated, he got intimidated. He was not able to stand, stand firm there. Many times it happens to us, but that is not wrong. God does not judge us based on that. He makes it an experience for us. We learn through our experiences. So once you get intimidated, don't stop being yourself. Don't stop being an ambassador for Christ. Your whole family should plan, should think of ways to be ambassadors of Christ. In, uh, in Peter's life, another thing that I would like to show you is how he was bold and when he was intimidated, he didn't get intimidated. You see in uh, John chapter 18, if you turn to John 18 verses 10, then Simon Peter who had a sword drew it and struck the high priest's servant. That Simon Peter had a sword with him. Why did he take the sword with him? Because Jesus asked him to take a sword with him. But even though he, had a, he was asked to bring the sword, he was not asked to use the sword. He, so Jesus there immediately, he says, uh, he cuts off the right ear and Jesus commanded Peter, put your sword away. Put your sword away. It is not sword culture with Jesus. He has to realize Peter is on the other side now. He was bold and brave and he was willing to do any arrogant thing that, that the situation required. But Jesus says no arrogance. Do not use the sword even if you have one in such situations. So we have to have a balance between getting intimidated and going beyond into violence. Between these two, we should bring a compromise as a family and we should be bold at the same time we should be led by the spirit so that we will have the empathy and sympathy for and love for people and will be able to show them the path of reconciliation what a great responsibility god has given us just think about it and we have to train our children also in this verse. We have to model it. We have to train our children in these ways. There's also another verse that I would like us to read. Luke 22 verses 31 and 32. As I told you, he says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat. This is a precautionary statement that Jesus tells Simon. So if we go to Jesus, if we work alongside him instead of us doing things, if we work alongside him, the paracletos walks alongside us. He is a great comforter. He is with us. So if we walk alongside him and do this work of an ambassador, we will surely be successful. Even though Peter was, had a precaution, he was cautioned earlier by Jesus, but he was not able to hold there, hold his stand there. But if we are filled with the Spirit, 
as peter was in after the in the day on the day of pentecost if the say if in the same way we are filled with the spirit we can stand boldly and at the same time we will have love and empathy for the people this kind of combination is what god wants us to have we should be salt and light don't ever forget this it's not that as a person i am salt and light no as a whole family we need to be salt and light that is the goal that jesus has for each one of our families so let's pray about it let's ask the holy spirit to guide us and lead us and find out ways in which we can shine our light so that people will find the path to reach god through jesus Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, we come before you, Lord. Father, you have told us to be bold at the same time to have love for the people, to understand the hearts of the people. Father, fill us with your spirit so that we will be able to fulfill the work that you have given us as a family. Father I pray that we will together as a family pray for those who do not know Jesus and pray for the blessings of others and lead a life so that we can be salt and light on this earth and thereby we will bring people to you in Jesus name I pray amen don't miss our episodes next week I'll come back to you with another episode Join us same time next week. God bless you. So here